Hey everybody, so today we talked a little bit about um, some more modeling techniques. So I wanted to update my tutorials and uh, talk a little bit about um, using a different type of modeling using splines. So let's go in and talk a little bit about that. Um, the first thing is we talked about text. So if you go up to the, the spline menu, which has this little squiggly dot pattern sort of form, uh, you can scroll down here. There's different tools that you can use to actually draw splines, and then there's actually preset splines. Now, a spline is essentially a path uh, that is created. In this case here, this is um, it's just text, and it's, so it's a path of those lines that can can eventually create a form. But uh, this path doesn't have any geometry, so if we render it out, you'll notice it's totally blank. Um, we have to uh, add some geometry to it in order for it to make a three-dimensional form. Okay, so the text tool, the basic text tool, what it is is, um, you know, just drops in the word text. You can type anything you want here. So, you know, I'm just going to type my name. Um, below that, you can choose uh, any font that you like uh, that's in your, um, you know, font sets. So, I'm just going to go for the old uh, Helvetica here somewhere. Here we go. Uh, that's good. Okay, change that up. You can change the height, the spacing, the vertical spacing, all these different sort of things. And uh, and then with this, what we need to do is add some geometry. So the way that we do that is uh, this other palette next to the spline tool is the NURBS palette. And in this one, we have a bunch of different icons. Uh, icons. This one is uh, what we're looking for, extrude. Here you can see there's a little uh, square sort of line form with the form coming out of it, extruding out of it. So if you choose this, you can simply take the text and drop it into the extrusion, extrude NURBS, and then it makes a three-dimensional form. So there you go. Now the way that it does this is that if you click on the extrude NURBS, hide that, highlight that, you can see there's a palette down below in the Attributes Manager called Movement. The first one is X, the second one is Y, and the third one is Z. So essentially it's taking and drawing out of that spline 20 centimeters along the z-axis. You see this blue axis here. So you want to make sure if it looks a little funny when you load it in, make sure that you're, it's moving along the correct axis that you want it to be moving. Okay, so there we have some basic 3D text. Now there's other ways to make objects using the text. So the other thing I wanted to add is that since the text is, has not been ed editable, right, if I press this button I would no longer be able to make these changes that I'm going to make right now. But since it is still in its primitive stage, we could, you know, add more letters. Um, I'll try to spell my name correctly here. Uh, let's just go to Joe Smo. How about that? <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, if I do that, then it's going to, um, you know, add that to it. So we can do that. I, again, I can still kind of... Uh, play with the scale here, change that, the horizontal spacing I can play with. All those things, you know, you can still play with those after the fact. So so that's important. Um, if you do, uh, if you are set with your text and you do want to make some other changes to individual letters, what you can do is um, you can click this button, separate letters, all right? And uh, then if you, nothing quite happens then, but if you then make the text, if you're happy with it and you make the text editable, then um, you will need to let's see, take all of these out of here. Oh, that's right. You need to do each one individually. So not too bad a thing. So anyway, what you do is you can um, work with these individually, but then you need to extrude each letter individually as well. So, but in this case, the 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 letters are separated, so I could essentially move them, you know, each individually you know, however you might want to space them. Okay, so that is uh, the extruding nerves. Oh, the last thing about um, the extrusion is, uh, let's just look at this closely at this J for a second here. Uh, okay, so um, in the extrusion, screwed nerves, you have uh, caps as well. So you can add um, a fillet, fillet to the cap, right? So you can add that. Notice how it puffs it out. It makes those edges more beveled. Again, you can change the, the steps if you want to make it rounded and do that, uh, etc. So that's the, the start cap, which is the front, right? If I turn around to the back side, notice that it's still flat. So if you wanted to affect the back side, then you need to use the end cap. 
So for like for like cap again there, you know, change this to four or whatever. So same sort of thing, kind of working with that. And of course you can change the fillet type, convex, uh, linear, uh, concave, sort of beveled in. So there's different ways to affect that. And then lastly, um, you know, it puffs it out a little bit, adding that dimension. So if you want to constrain it, it will keep within that original format and then try to fit your bevel within that sort of form. So that's another thing to consider when you're working with um, uh, with the extrude nerves. All right. So then there's more, you know, there's more types of uh, things, the other types of splines that you can use with that extrude nerve. So for example, I could um, pop in um, any of these sort of forms, star for example, you know, and you can change how many points you want, um, you know, and drop this in and it will make, you know, a dimensional form. Now notice it's, it, it kept the beveling and all those things on that I had the original one. But again, you know, you can do um, all kinds of different formations just using splines, right? You can make this a dimensional form. Uh, so, you know, any number of things in here, you know, four side, uh, you know, profile, any of these sort of things that are closed splines will work, okay? If you try using a formula, if you try using the arc, you won't be able to, to make a um, form. Well, the other thing is that um, you can make your own form. So, I'm going to go to the front view, okay, enlarge that, and grab... Um, any number of these uh, sort of forms. The freehand one will allow you to just simply draw, okay? And you can draw any sort of shape or form. Uh, notice when I do this, though, it's it's not a closed spline. In order to extrude it, you need to have a closed spline. So in your attributes manager, just click closed spline, and, uh, and then you can go and extrude that out. So if I take this then, and I drop this in my extrude nerves, and now I have, uh, you know, that formation. So any number of things that you can do. Now, um, with this, I could uh, make it editable, right? It is already editable, but I could choose any of these points, and I can uh, manipulate it, right? Grab these handlebars, bevel it out, and work in these different ways. So, you know, this gives you the option to, um, to manipulate it after the fact. So you can create many different shapes using splines. Just remember, they need to be closed splines, um, and you need to extrude it to uh, make it a form. Okay, one more thing that I was thinking about in terms of working with splines. Uh, many of you are working with sort of, uh, since the trophy project, kind of uh, vessel-like forms, round forms, uh, cylindrical kind of forms. I'm going to show you one more way of using splines and nerves to create those sort of vessels or objects. So let's go back to our front view. Okay, and what I want to do in this case is I'm going to draw half of a profile of a cylindrical object along the y-axis. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to take my freehand tool again. I'm going to start, you know, close to the to the y-axis, like on this line, and I'm just going to draw a shape, essentially a profile of a form, and I'm going to end back along that same sort of axis. Okay, so here's my shape. Then I'm going to go back to my perspective view so we can see what it does and I'm going to select an object that looks like a vase of some sort this one lathe nerves what this is going to do is it's literally going to take this spline and it's going to spin it around and create an object out of it so we drop this in here and now we have a three-dimensional object okay um, so if we look at this you can see that since I started and stopped at that um, y-axis it has, uh, you know, sort of made a closed sort of shape. Now, if I were to grab on the spline here, points is selected. If I grab this point right here and I move it, open it a bit, and do this, notice now I have an opening, right? Because it's not ending at that y axis, right? And uh, now I have a sort of an interior of the space. So you can choose if you want it closed or not based on how close it is to that y axis. And, um, and you, you can uh, change and manipulate each individual uh, shape and form uh, from that. So, you know, this is a really powerful way to create, you know, decorative elements, you know, again, those sort of trophy-like cups, anything like that, very quickly and easily to get uh, that sort of form. And, of course, we have this nice 
three-dimensional object based on it. So that's the lathe nerves. Um, the only thing to remember with lathe nerves is that it's going to spin around the, um, the y-axis. Um, and so, you know, it's important to, um, to make your drawing. I usually just do it from the front view. It's a little bit easier that way. And um, again, you know, you can continue to work on the splines after the fact and change and manipulate um, based on, you know, how your form is. So, you know, that's a, it's a good way to make these rounded sort of cylindrical forms. So, practice with splines using closed splines to extrude and you know half splines along the y-axis using the lathe tool, lathe nerves tool to create rounded uh, cylindrical forms and uh, and hopefully that'll that'll move your project forward